Last week, I published a strongly worded video about a climate science study that had attracted a lot of media attention. As many of you noticed, the day later the video disappeared and I also deleted a post on X Twitter that some of you may have seen. I want to briefly explain what happened there. In the video, I took offense with a study from the World Weather Attribution Center about the LA wildfires from January. They put out a press release which says that, quote, we find that human-induced warming from burning fossil fuels made the peak January fire weather index 30% more probable, end quote. And they also write that they have, quote, high confidence that human-induced climate change, primarily driven by the burning of fossil fuels, increase the likelihood of the devastating LA wildfires, end quote. I pointed out that their own analysis doesn't support this claim because their result is statistically insignificant significant. It's compatible with climate change not having had any effect on the LA wildfires from January this year. Welcome to Science with Sabina, in which we obsess about digits after the point in studies that no one reads. Somewhat more seriously, the reason I got so pissed off about this, and I tell you my poor husband has endured me going on about this for a week now, isn't just that they didn't mention in their press release that they didn't find evidence for climate change change playing a role in this fire. And it's not just that the media reported this without looking at the study results. It's that many climate scientists know how sketchy the studies are that come out of this World Weather Attribution Center, but they keep their mouth shut. This study has been online for a month and no one besides me noticed that the result isn't statistically significant. Seriously? I don't buy this for a second. There are many climate climate scientists who totally know that their so-called research isn't reliable, but they don't say a word because it'd be politically inconvenient. I've seen this happening before. It's how people in the foundations of physics destroyed the reputation of my research area. Whenever there's some crap going around in the media, they look away and keep their mouth shut, thinking all attention is better than no attention. It's one of the reasons why I don't trust science. Scientists, despite what some people want you to think, I'm not saying this to attract attention. It's much easier. I'm saying this because I really don't trust scientists. And this suspicious silence about crap studies that attract media attention is a good illustration for why. So the video's been up for about 12 hours and someone tells me that I misread the result table and the results statistically significant after all. I ask for a clarification, but I get no quick response. And at that moment, I have to leave the house knowing I'll be offline for the rest of the day. I decided the best course of action would be to set the video on private, ask someone else to look into it, and then look at it myself when I'm back. This is why the video suddenly went private, because I don't want to spread misinformation, not in general and certainly not on a topic like wildfire risk that affects the lives of millions of people. These are policy-relevant numbers. People in the LA area must now decide what to do in response to this event. And for that, it matters whether they think that this sort of thing will happen more frequently in the future or whether that was a one-off freak event that's unlikely to repeat in the next century. This research matters for people's lives. When physicists talk nonsense about dark matter, you could say, well, who really cares? I mean, it's not like someone dies if they mistakenly come to believe that gravitinos exist or whatever. But the question of how to adapt to climate change will affect how many people die in the next wildfires. So much about my misgivings. Now let me explain the problem because it turns out the study is so bad it's actually quite funny. First let me remind you how they do their extreme event attribution. They run a set of climate models twice, once without global warming and once with global warming at the current level. They count how many events they see that are similar to the target, in this case the LA wildfire and then they compare the probabilities. One of the problems with this procedure is that many of the existing climate models don't correctly predict these extreme events to begin with, so they throw out most of the models. Yeah, that isn't a good procedure, 
but it's what they do. Another problem is that the result depends on just exactly how you define the extreme event. Because if you define it with too many details, then it'll just never show up in your computer simulation and you'll be comparing zero to zero. In any case, after they've done all this, they compute the probability of such an event occurring with climate change at the current level and the probability of it occurring without climate change. And then they take the ratio. So if the ratio is larger than one, then the event became more likely. If the ratio is smaller than one, it became less likely. This ratio is the main result which they report. That said, have a look at the results table and focus on this entry. This is the mean value of the result for the probability ratio and below this is the 95% confidence interval. You can see that while the mean is slightly larger than one by the 35% that they quote in the press release, the result is compatible with one. A quick reminder of what a confidence interval is. That's basically an uncertainty region around the results of your model. If you were perfectly sure what the result is, you could say that the observation needs to agree with that. If the observation was here instead, then you'd know something is going on. But in reality, the results from your model will have some distribution. Then you say in 95% of cases, the result will be within this region. And if the observation is outside of this region, then you have a statistically significant anomaly. What I read from this table now is that the case in which climate change had no effect on the wildfires is within the 95% confidence interval. So the result is not statistically significant. Now that's what I thought in any case, because unfortunately they don't explain in the paper what they mean by statistical significance. But in many areas of science, the result needs to be outside of the 95% confidence interval to count as significant. In some areas, it needs to be outside the 99% interval, or if you're a particle physicist, 99.999%. .999%. A confidence interval smaller than 95% would be somewhat of a joke, if you ask me. So if you look at the numbers in the result table, it all seems pretty clear. But then let's have a look at the caption. The changes in the table are all increases. According to the table caption, decreases are marked in orange and increases are marked in blue. Now, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't call that color blue. This makes me think they mixed up orange and blue. If we fix that, then the caption says that non-significant increases are light orange and significant ones dark orange, which brings up the question of whether this color is light orange or dark orange. What do you think. I checked the other tables in the paper to see if they used a second type of orange, and indeed there is one, but neither of those oranges is the same as in the first table. Because of this, I guess that they also messed up the hues, and these two are light orange, and that one is dark orange. Then someone comes and says, I misread this. Actually, this is light orange and this is dark orange. And someone else says that this confidence interval isn't relevant for the statistical significance. Because if you compare two probability distributions, rather than a distribution with a specific value, the confidence interval business becomes much more complicated. Hmm, I think maybe I got that wrong. And unfortunately, they don't say in the text whether these results are statistically significant. You see my problem now? One thing I could have done is to say this misunderstanding really isn't my fault because they've completely messed up their table legends and their color code and their text. Yes, I did consider doing this. I was very tempted, but misinformation is still misinformation. So I had a colleague send an email to the lead author of the paper. Why didn't I do this in the first place, you may ask? Because I didn't have any questions. To me, the table showed pretty clearly it's not statistically significant. I double-checked this with a climate scientist who agreed, and for what it's worth, I also fed the entire report into both ChatGPT and Grok and asked them, and they agreed it's not statistically significant. But then trusting AI isn't a good idea, is it really? I shouldn't have done this. Three days pass, and we finally get a reply from the lead author of the paper. 
and it's an out of office reply. But then we get a reply from one of the other authors, which I'll read to you in full. As you can see from the numbers, the changes in intensity and likelihood are unsurprisingly not statistically significant. So light orange it is. So what I said was correct and the videos back up. As a consequence of this interlude, I've looked closer at this study than I ever wanted to. And I now think it's even worse than I thought it is. It's so bad, I have sincere doubts that even the authors read it. But I do have a regret about the earlier video, which is that I forgot to mention that this was what they call a rapid attribution study, which isn't peer reviewed. This too isn't stated in the press release though. Also, let me be clear that it's quite possible that climate change has made wildfires more likely in some regions of the world. I'd find it surprising if that wasn't so, but whether it had any influence on the LA wildfires is a different question. This analysis tells us nothing about it. I should also add that this isn't the only research group which works on extreme event attribution and there are several different methods to do it. Some of which are better, others worse. So please don't take this to mean that all of this research is unreliable. I want to officially acknowledge the possibility that some of it isn't crap. But I have to say that my opinion of climate scientists has taken some damage here. I really think they should do something about it. I don't regret taking a few days to look into this because I would have hated getting this wrong but temporarily taking a video down nukes the YouTube recommendations. I guess it's because the oh-so-intelligent algorithm doesn't understand that no one could watch the video. So it treats the video as one that badly underperforms and stops recommending it. Which is why I'd like to ask you a small favor. If you have a few seconds, could you just click on the video and let it run for a bit? Maybe it'll come back from the dead. Finally, I want to thank all of my supporters on Patreon, especially those of you in tier four and higher. I also want to thank everyone who's joined this channel here on YouTube. Without your support, I wouldn't be able to continue making these videos. That's it for today. Now go and do something useful with your day. Dark orange, my ass.